In this example, we are going to look at damping for an object floating in water. But first, let us define simple harmonic motion. Two points as usual. You will start off with the defining equation. A is proportional to negative x. Okay, so first is the proportionality, second is the direction. I will write it down for you. So here are the two points. One, acceleration is directly proportional to displacement of a particle. Two, they are in opposite direction. So B1, B1. If you mention them, you will get one mark. All right, moving on. A mass is undergoing oscillation in the vertical plane, sure. The variation with displacement x of the acceleration of the mass is shown. Look at this weird looking graph. Okay, state two reasons why the motion is not simple harmonic. Or in other words, based on this A against x graph, tell us why you don't think that A is proportional to negative x. Why is this A proportional to negative x not shown? in the graph. All right, first things first, the graph ain't a straight line. So if it's not a straight line, it is not proportional to negative x. So I'll write that down first. Okay, the graph is a curve or the graph is not a straight line. So if you just want to explain a bit more, generally this is good enough, but just to give you extra, showing that a and a is not directly proportional to x. Okay, second one. You could say you want to think about direction, but in this case, I can see A and X, if one is positive, the other one is negative. Okay, so that one is a little bit hard to say. But look, 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 look here, look here. You see, oh, this amplitude is 2 cm. Or rather, 10 boxes. Ne ne I mean, in the negative direction, but it is 10 boxes. And if you look at this, this is this is, this, this is more than 10, bro. This is 15. Ay so you have this very weird oscillating system that move downwards 10 boxes, but move upwards positive x 15 boxes. Down 10, up 15. You need uh, oscillation. Cannot lah. Because... Oscillating system must have the same displacement, same amplitude, left and right, up and down. So that'll be the problem. No? So it's not the same amplitudes in both positive and negative direction. So I'll write that down. I will say that the maximum displacement, you must write the word maximum. Huh? Well, I guess you could use the term amplitude. Huh? Amplitudes in both directions up and down are different or not the same so this is how we know it's not simple harmonic motion now we go oscillation so weird one the energy is not conserved already your energy in one direction is magically more than the energy in the other direction and then when you swing back to the other direction you create more energy well, what magic i also want okay so here we see a block of wood floating in liquid Okay, and this block is probably, you know, it's going to bob up and down. Cool, cool stuff. The block is displaced vertically and then released. So maybe we push down the block a little bit or we pull up the block a little bit. Actually, push down, I can tell here. So the block, if you don't disturb the block, the block is here. Right, but you disturb the block by pushing it down. So now the block is here. Hiya, why you push the block? So when you push down the block, what do you do? You increase the up thrust, right? You displace more water. Ma. This block was in water. You push it down, you displace more water. So because of that larger up thrust, then the block is like, yo, I can't stay down here. I have to go up. So the block will begin to accelerate upwards. Okay, so it's going to go upwards. But as it go upwards, less water is displaced. But inertia will carry it up until it's slightly higher than the original position. And then it will go down and then it will oscillate. You have seen this before, okay? Bobbing in water. All right, cool. Variation with time t and displacement from equilibrium position is shown. Beautiful. You see the, the amplitude decrease gradually in the exponential envelope. This is like damping, lah. okay? I'm very proud of this new information. If let's say you just learned the damping chapter, so I'm just going to call this 
just a flexibility type of damping, light damping, or I guess you could call under damping. Okay, why? Because of an exponential decrease and same time period. Refer to your notes. So you are asking, the question is asking you to use the graph to determine the angular frequency. Since it's light damping, what can we say about the angular frequency? The frequency is constant for light damping. So I guess we could read the frequency from here, or I guess the period, and you can see from here, this point here, 0 0.8, this is your period. You don't want 0 0.8, you could take 1.6, 2 cycle, you could take 2.4, 3 cycle, but I'm happy with 0 0.8. So I'm going to start with period is 0 0.8. Always check out uh, any hiding prefix. No, no hiding prefix. So 0 0.8, 0 second. And then we want to find omega. That would be 2 pi over t. So 2 pi over 0 0.8. And that would give you 7.9 radian per second. Write your answer in 2SF or 3SF. Never ever write answer in pi. We are not doing maths, we're doing physics. I have to check your significant figures. So two or three significant figures, always. How, why do I write 0 0.80? Because I can read to what two decimal point from the graph, right? The smallest uh, possible value is 0 0.02. So I could read another decimal point. All right, next, maximum vertical acceleration of the block. So if you've watched the theory videos for uh, describing simple harmonic motion, you know all this maximum, maximum value can always use the same equation one. I don't care whether it's a block in the water, pendulum, spring, it doesn't matter as long as you have A and omega. So let's start. Maximum displacement is defined as amplitude. Maximum velocity, amplitude times omega. Think of the differentiation. Maximum acceleration, a omega squared. So we keep multiplying omega, like adding an omega egg, you know? adding an egg, add another omega due to the differentiation relationship. Okay, so a max now will be equal to a omega. I'll just write this square. What is my a, teacher? My a keeps changing. They say maximum, right? You think like the maximum a. What is the maximum a? No. Negative 1.5. You see a prefix here hiding? Cm. So please include the prefix. Uh. Negative 1.5 times 10 to the power negative 2 Cm. Okay. Always double check prefix. Double check this one. If this is meter, then the Cm must convert to meter. All right. What is our omega? 7.9 square. Okay. And then if you press your calculator, you will get... 0.94 meter per second square. Okay. Of course, if you take one SF, this one is 7.9, 7 7.85. Okay, let me write a different color. So if you take different, different, 7.85, then this one would be 0 0.93. Okay. Whenever you do this kind of question, it is not the actual answer that is important. That, that, that is the only thing that we look at. Okay, We look at things like, did you recall the right equation? So if I see the right equation here, this part, I have to, I'll give you C1 already. Did you show the substitution into the right equation leading to the right answer to the right SF? Yes. So this is A1 and done deal. Then when you transfer the answer over, I will just see whatever you write long. If you put 7.9 here, I understand that 7.9 is from here. If you put 7.85 here, but you didn't show how you get 7.85, it's a bit sketch. Lah. So you could write this 2 pi over 0 0.8 as equal to 7.85 equal to 7.9. Oh, I just stick to 7.9. They're all okay. So what I need is actually to show the equation, showcase the equation, show the substitution. This is C1. You can substitute 7.9, you can substitute 7.85 doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you wrote before. As long as, as an examiner, I know where the value of omega come from. I have seen it in part one. And you can use it in part two. Okay. Leading to the answer A1. Cool.
So don't worry too much about the last SF. But please write your answer in two or three SF. All the answers. All right. Part three. The block has a mass of 120 grams. Nice. The oscillation of the block is them. Yes, I identified that. Calculate the loss in energy of the oscillation of the block during the first three complete periods of its oscillation. Okay, let's go up there and count now. What's the first three complete oscillation? Okay, okay, come, come. Okay, I teach you to count in Malay lah for our international audience. This one is satu, one. Here is the second oscillation, dua, two. This is the third oscillation, tiga, three. So, first, second, third oscillation. Hey, hey, what is the amplitude of our third oscillation? Of course, we start from here. Okay, so the third oscillation, the amplitude looks like negative 0 0.9. Oh, so small. The initial amplitude is negative 1.5. So, the amplitude decreases from negative 1.5 to negative 0 0.9 cm. Okay, I'm going to write that down. So after three cycles, the amplitude has gone from 1.5 to 0 0.9. Okay, yeah. okay write, that, write, that, write that down. Okay, first complete period. The amplitude for the first cycle is... I'm just going to take the magnitude, okay? Because when it comes to energy, only the amplitude matters. So 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 2 meter. And the second amplitude after three complete oscillation, which is AO. La. A3 is 0 0.9 times 10 to the power of negative 2 meter. Okay, recall the equation of energy of oscillation. So this energy of oscillation is the total energy. All the energy contained by that floating block, ET. <laughs> total energy. The total energy here will be maximum kinetic energy so watch the video i explain why before when kinetic energy is maximum the potential is zero right so this will be half m maximum velocity square do we have equation for v max yes a times omega so this is half m a square omega square this means it doesn't matter whether your amplitude is positive or negative you will square it it will become positive, like all energy should be, unless we're talking about change in energy. Okay? So in this case, I'm going to find what the initial energy is. So I'm just going to call this E0. E0 will be half M. I guess I'll write the equation first to secure my one mark. Lah. I, I like insurance one. Sometimes, or I don't know what happened to me. Maybe my hand and my brain don't work together. I write wrong thing. So I always write equation for the guarantee one mark. Mass is 0 0.120 kg. This is in joule, so this one we must convert to kg. Amplitude square, 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 2. Okay. Omega square, teacher, I take 7.9 or 7.85. Are you like lah? I take 7.85 here. Lah. Okay. So I'll get a number for this. I'm going to repeat this one for E3. So that will be half 0 0.120 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 2. Hey, no, no, 1.5. My bad. 0 0.9 times 10 to the power of negative 2. 7.85 square. Okay, this one I need to press calculator. Huh? 0 0.12. Negative 2. Oh, hang on. There's a square here. There's a square here. So, don't be me. Remember your squares. All right. So, this one is 8.319 times 10 to the power of negative 4 joule. Okay. E3 would be, I guess I'll change this to 0 0.9. This one would be 2.995. So I give you an example of someone who writes many SFs. Okay, this is not the final answer. You want the loss in energy, so I'm going to take E not minus E three. I just I don't need to take final minus initial. Just want the loss or the change. 
So energy loss will be equal to 8.319 minus 2.995 bracket times 10 to the power of negative 4. What would that be? 1.9 minus 2.95. That will be 5.324. Okay, and if you want to write 3SF, you can feel free to go ahead. I'm going to stick to 2, 5.3 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Okay, so where are the marks? Um, if I see half m a square omega square somewhere here, la, floating somewhere, this one, and you take E0 minus E3, you will get your C1 mark. Okay, the next mark will be you uh, substituting correctly for both C1. And then finally, the final answer is A1. Okay. And some of you who are good in maths, you don't have to find them separately. You can actually just subtract them. Okay, so I will write out that brief working for you in case you don't know what I'm talking about. You could just say the loss in energy. Energy loss is equal to E0 minus E3. So you have half M uh, A square omega square A0 square minus half M A3 square omega square. And as usual, when we have common factors, we like to take them out, big bracket, a naught square minus a3 square. Then you can substitute here and find law. Also can. So continue yourself, lah. you'll get the answer. Um, I find that sometimes when students do this, if they're not clear what is going on or they're not familiar with algebra, they will mess up. So you can divide and conquer or you can do all together. They are both okay. Just make sure you, you, you write the right things. Okay, don't make calculation error. Okay, that's it for this example. I'll see you in the next one. Take care now.